fans of Fresh Coast Gaming, Jeremy here. Today I have an unboxing video for you. I kind of foobarred the first, so it's not a true unboxing. I repacked it to the best of my ability from remembrance. But uh, the contents of this box contain a Beyond the Gates of Antares Gar Scout Force. Warlord Games shipped this Scout Force to me as part of the initiative um, campaign um, which is uh, for their brand new if hopefully you've already listened to Josh's um, video unboxing himself with him and Oscar uh, it explains in all great detail what the beyond the gates of Antares initiative is so if you're unsure please go back and watch that video but uh, <clears throat> anyways as part of this initiative for our club, we had to choose a faction and then build a 500 point scout force. Now, I chose Gar. Okay, let's take a look. Let's actually, let's just open this up so you're not staring at a top of a box because that's kind of boring. <laughs> so, I chose the faction, uh, it's, it's the Gar basically. Uh, they, uh, fluff wise, are an ancient humanoid race, uh, basically, whose sole existence is to wage war. They're, they're villains, and they're villains of Beyond the Gates of Antares universe. Uh, basically, all the factions I play for any game system are typically always the villains. <laughs> it's just who I am. So that sort of appealed to me. Uh, I also chose them as a faction because I really like their... Uh, Really like their basic troops, which are sort of these battle suits, and I'll show you those in just a little bit. So, uh, really cool. This is the scout force, and they sent me uh, my entire scout force that I needed, and a little bit of extra, and everything I needed to play the game. So let's take a look and see what I have. Um, right here uh, is an outcast squad. It's actually a uh, it's a tactical unit, uh, which is. Uh, for a scouting force for Gar, you have to have two or three of them. Now I'm actually not using the Outcast Squad, but I'm rather using the Disruptive Cannon out of it, which is just a Disruptor Cannon and a squad of two. It's kind of neat. It's, it's a le light weapons platform, so if you're familiar with bolt action, you, you might understand those terms. But it, it shoots, I think, 20 or 30. It, it shoots blast weapons uh, D4 times. Really neat. The contents are... Uh, Pretty pretty smart. As you can see, the the guard are not very, not very attractive looking guys. Uh, <laughs> just they used to be human at some point. Uh, they're not even sure how long ago that they used to be human. They don't really record history. They only care about killing things. Mostly other humanoids. Um, I uh, part of my scout force has uh, Tectris. Uh, they're a sharded infantry unit. Basically, these guys. Uh, they run out ahead and uh, mark targets, sort of like a like a spotter drone. Uh, these guys have a special ability that allow me to re-roll dice when I'm shooting at a target that's within a certain range. It's another uh, another another unit of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, the dice. Uh, so again, uh, similar the the order dice. So for it's a uh, bolt uh, beyond the gates of Antares has a you go, I go sort of um, activation. That was where the activations occur when you pull these activation dice out of a bag. Um, one thing I noticed here, hey Warlord Games, there is no odd die for the distort die. There's no odd color die. Huh. Well, no worries. I have uh, some bolt action dice of different colors that I could use. And, uh, oh, look at this. We got some, uh, we got the dice pack. Uh, Josh went over that. It's a fascinating, mostly a D10 system. There's a D3 there. Don't think I've ever seen one of those. Uh, there's a D4, D6, and a bunch of D10s. We have a. Oh, okay, it's the pin markers. Really neat. Uh, basically, there's this dial here. You might not be able to see it. You can see the numbers there. And uh, these little blast markers sit on top, and you rotate them to represent pins. Uh, it, it's sort of like um, in the game, 
when you use uh, take hits or become wounded or do special actions, sometimes they, they enforce pins, and these pins have an ability to uh, affect the way the units activate. Like uh, they might be pinned down so much that they simply don't activate. It's a good part of the system. It, uh, not in addition to moving and shooting, you have to worry about managing the, your unit, especially if they become pinned. Uh, really a neat mechanic uh, if you're not familiar with it or, or played a game that has a sort of a pinning mechanic to it. Uh, yeah, I think you might enjoy it. Uh, templates, the blast template. I think these are uh, shield templates for like drone shields and then some uh, tokens uh, for representing different effects. Really neat. Uh, here's the bread and butter. These are the things that I really fell in love with the Gar, and uh, the reason that I, one of the primary reasons I want to select them. Most Gates of Antares basic troopers are little infantry guys, you know, little 28 millimeter humanoids with guns, uh, but not the Gar. The Gar's basic trooper is a walking robot, which is really cool. I do find it kind of uh, ironic that their basic trooper is a walking robot because fluff-wise, the Gar are, are ancient and their technology is antiquated. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> what makes that really funny is uh, even though they have walking robots, they're prone to maybe um, malfunction a lot of their features. like. They might, if they get hit, uh, self-destruct. Uh, if you if you get like a perfect hit on a plasma reactor, they could blow up. And like some of their abilities, like uh, they have an ability to become mod two, which is a neat little system in Gates and Tari, where you can get two activations per unit. Sometimes that mod two, I think it's a plasma amplifier. Yeah, the plasma amplifier uh, option on these guys uh, allow them to activate twice per turn. Because sometimes that thing will just will stop working, and then you lose that extra activation. Which is kind of a bummer, but uh, I have some plans for painting these guys. I think I've settled on a orange and uh, orange and black paint scheme with uh, blue glowy effects. The reason I selected orange is one, I've never painted anything orange before, and two, uh, we are on a blue icy planet. Uh, fluff wise. Um, we are given a planet for all our campaigns, and uh, we have an ice planet. And I think uh, contrasting color to blue, being orange, I think that would make them really stick out for battle reports, uh, just in general. So, and of course there's two boxes of these. And then beautifully, beautifully packed in the bottom of this, as if that box is almost the perfect size, is the rule book for Gates and Tires. Hopefully not getting too much glare there from my uh, with from my light, but uh, it's a really nice rule book, really well put together, very solid. Uh, the contents of it has some wonderful artwork, uh, some decent decent fluff, uh, and uh, really nice is everything you need to play for any faction in Beyond the Gates of Antares is all in this one book. So for right now, play this game. You just need this one book. I like that. So, um, but kind of step back. So uh, this is my scout force and everything uh, Warlord Games sent me to play. Uh, thanks for viewing the video and look for future Beyond the Gates of Antares bat reps from us.